everyone, I Exalt here and I'm back with a new video, this time about Bioware's upcoming game Anthem. I wanted to share with you my reaction regarding the video recently published by the official channel for the Anthem game. In this video, I'll be using clips taken from this video, but I will be keeping the most relevant clips of them all. I wanted to share my reaction and to reflect on the following question. To what extent will or did Mass Effect Andromeda influence Anthem as far as the gameplay is concerned? We all know that Mass Effect Andromeda was some sort of disappointment for many players because the story was not as developed as it was in the original trilogy. But this is also interesting to point out that, well, Mass Effect Andromeda is a bit like Mass Effect. By the time Mass Effect was released, Bioware had been working on the gameplay thanks to their previous game, Star Wars The Knights of the Old Republic. Most elements of the gameplay in KOTOR were in fact integrated into the gameplay of Mass Effect and as the trilogy continued, more elements were added and some elements were kept, some elements were changed and the gameplay little by little changed completely. The gameplay in Mass Effect 1 has nothing to do with the gameplay in Mass Effect 3 for instance, uh, power cooldowns, uh, the fact that you can run, for instance, in Mass Effect 2, this was limited, in Mass Effect 3, this was not the case, and in Mass Effect Andromeda, you can even jump. So, about this video, the first time we were introduced to Anthem was in 2017, a few months after uh, Mass Effect Andromeda was released, and at this time, many people on YouTube began to ask the question, was Mass Effect Andromeda sacrificed for Anthem? And the recent video we had about uh, Anthem seems to confirm this, especially knowing that in Mass Effect Andromeda, you have the ability to fly if you mod the game. It's called the Iron Man mode. The first element of gameplay I wanted to introduce was the enemies the different enemy factions that we will encounter during our future playthrough of Anthem. You have Scars. Scars seem to be a faction of enemy comprised of hunters and scrappers as well as enforcers. Most of these enemies have health, a red bar, which means health. The enforcer seems to have a yellow bar which means armor, which the main protagonist of the game also has. This system is directly inherited from Mass Effect 2. In Mass Effect 1, you had shields, and in Mass Effect 2, they introduced barriers. Also, the way the system shields versus barrier was organized began to change with Mass Effect 2, and it continued with Mass Effect 3. You had certain powers efficient against barriers and certain powers efficient against shields, which is not the case in Mass Effect Andromeda because they removed barrier uh, and they kept shields only. Barrier seems to be a passive power and it is not the same barrier as in uh, Mass Effect 3. In fact, when we look at the video of Anthem, we find many elements that seem to recall the Mass Effect uh, universe. For example, you have the ability to use three powers. If you look at the bottom left corner of the video, you'll see three powers, one with the left button, the other with the right button, and the last one with the Y button. You can carry two weapons, and this also seem to be directly inherited from Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer. Three powers with rather long cooldowns. This cooldown system was first introduced with Mass Effect and it was dropped with Mass Effect 2. Each power used to have its individual cooldown. The universe in which the protagonists seem to evolve is also not worthy for the reason that you have white life. The universe seems to be more lively than in Mass Effect Andromeda. 
In this section of the video, we learn about the combo system. The combo system is another element that recalls the Mass Effect Andromeda universe. In fact, in Mass Effect 3, combos also existed, but they had different titles, like Tech Bursts, for instance, or Fire Explosion. To simplify this, Mass Effect and Tormida reunited them all under one title, Combo. The way the characters move is also very reminiscent of Mass Effect and Tormida gameplay. You can stay in the air if you want, and there's also the possibility of using air melee, something that you find also in Mass Effect and Tormida. The enemies I was talking about earlier appear regularly in the video. And in fact, you have two factions. You have the Scars and you have those spiders whose name I don't remember if they told us what that was. But these suffer from the same criticism I addressed the Scars earlier, meaning that most of the units that they use have health only. What makes the enemies noteworthy is also the fact that some units are elite units, like for example, elite scrappers or legendary enforcer. Moreover, the fact that the health bar of enemies appears right at the top of their heads is also something you find in Mass Effect Andromeda, in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, and in Mass Effect 3 in general, even in Mass Effect 2 or in Mass Effect 1, the health bar of the enemies appeared at the very top of the screen. You see the navigation bar which is also something you find in Mass Effect Andromeda. In previous Mass Effect games, the navigation bar had different looks. In order to replace shields and barrier, BioWare seems to have preferred using heavily armored enemies like boss enemies in Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer instead of enemies with, you know, barriers or uh, enemies with a huge amount of shields. The Red Cross that appears anytime you kill an enemy is also something that was taken from Mass Effect Andromeda. The overall ambience of the game is also close to what we saw in Mass Effect Andromeda. The cave, for instance. The use of bioluminescence. The game is also based on the concept of exploration. They seem to have removed the scanner, which is a good thing, but also it's a shame. I really liked what they did with the fact that you could build your own uh, weapons or armor. The main protagonist also reminds me a little of the N7 Destroyer in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. The fact that he's carrying these kind of weapons, he has soldier-oriented powers. Powers, which by the way, seem to be close to what we had with the Soldier class in Mass Effect in general, but especially Mass Effect Andromeda. It reminds me of a more military approach to Mass Effect. It's as if they gave the Mass Effect universe a more military touch, the same kind we had in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Which also leads me to the point that probably if Mass Effect Andromeda seems to be so incomplete, it's probably because it, it was used the same way as uh, Star Wars at the time was used for Mass Effect. The game became a means to uh, put in practice all the uh, technological uh, progress that had been uh, done at the time. At the time, the game seemed to pave the way for what was coming in Mass Effect. If we have this impression, it's because usually what BioS seems to be doing with their games is to introduce new elements little by little so that players can adapt to new content, to the fact that things are always changing. So sometimes it's true that they keep ideas from the first, very first Mass Effect. For example, in Mass Effect Andromeda, power cools down are individual. For each power, you have a separate cooldown, which was also the case in Mass Effect and will also be the case in Anthem. These powers seem to be more military than, you know, biotech or uh, technological uh, powers. 
The Swarm Tyrant is the perfect illustration of what I pointed out earlier with the fact that heavily armored boss enemies will be replacing heavily shielded or enemies with a huge amount of area. Heavily armored enemies will obviously replace heavily shielded enemies. Thank you for watching this video and for hearing out my comment on uh, upcoming Anthem. I'm really happy that Bi Bioware is publishing a new game. I won't, you know, I won't blame EA for what happened with Mass Effect and Formula. The fact that they urged the game and the fact that the game, you know, was not as successful as expected. And this really does not really matter in the end because Mass Effect and Romeda multiplayer is well alive and, you know, kicking. Uh, you still can find lobbies full of people and I think that's good because Anthem would be built on the same kind of spirit and that's a good thing because it's also another way of pioneering a new vision of games. Uh, the fact that thanks to the internet we can be together and the only thing I hope is that they won't borrow too much from Mass Effect and Formida the same way Mass Effect and Formida did not really borrow uh, much from uh, Mass Effect 3. For example, the characters uh, in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer are more specific characters which you didn't see anywhere else. And that's precisely why they did not appear in Mass Effect and Formida because they wanted to save the charm that Mass Effect 3 had, and I think they did well on this point. And Anthem, just like Mass Effect and Romeda in the end, will, I think, take good things from Mass Effect and Romeda, and it will add new elements, which I hope are going to work well. I really hope that the reaction to the release of uh, Anthem will not be as negative as it was with Mass Effect and Romeda, because in the end, what happened was that a whole branch of the Bioware uh, division of EA was closed because you know, of the negative feedback they had after Mass Effect Andromeda was released. Thank you for watching this video. Next videos will include Platinum Duos as well as Platinum Guides for uh, your characters. Again, have a nice day and see you soon. Bye.